Today we're going to talk about vinyl chloride. This is one of the many chemicals that was released into the air and I believe into the water when the train derailed in East Palestine, Ohio. This is a couple months ago. Today we're going to learn about it, how it applies to our day to day life and some of the dangers of inhaling it, especially as it relates to the train derailment and disaster in East Palestine. So let's get into it. What is vinyl chloride? Well, vinyl chloride is a colorless gas. It's very flammable. What's interesting though, is that even though it's flammable and has a lot of dangers when it's inhaled, it has a sweet, pleasant odor. I just thought that was interesting because there's a really interesting contrast between its dangers and the fact that it smells pleasant. It's a part of a family called the organochlorines. An example is chloromethane, and this is what's used to make silicone, and DDT, which is a pretty nasty pesticide that I believe has been banned. It's carcinogenic, and toxic carcinogenic mean it could lead to cancer. We'll talk a little bit about that in a second. But in general, carcinogenic compounds have the potential to initiate mutations in DNA that would lead to cancer. The most important application of vinyl chloride is polyvinyl chloride, which is PVC. This is something we use in our day to day lives, which is why I wanted to make this video, because although we're learning about this in this train derailment, it's a very important application in our day to day life. So let's talk about the organochlorines. So we have DDT, and these are just some of the many molecules that belong to this family. And this was that nasty pesticide that I believe was banned a while ago. Then we have Claritin. Almost all of us know about Claritin. It's the allergy medication. Then we have Epibatidine. This is an interesting molecule. You find this in the Ecuadorian frog, poison dart frogs. And this molecule is used to immobilize amongst other things. And this is a molecule that's being studied for its analgesic effects, its pain relief effects. And we've talked about all kinds of molecules that are being studied for different drugs. And I just want to make a point like I have before that it's so interesting how so many medications we use come from the natural world and so many medications that are being developed come from the natural world. And then we have this one, 2378 tetrachlorodibenzopdioxin. This is one of the chemicals you'd find in Agent Orange. From what I understand, this is not one of the main two. It's kind of like a, a molecule present in a very small amount, but it is an organochlorine. I mentioned earlier about PVC piping. Well, PVC is polyvinyl chloride. I believe this is one of the only stable applications for vinyl chloride. I think it's used in other things, but this is the most practical and it's not harmful at all. If it's in the gas form, it's definitely harmful, but in PVC, it's not harmful and it's very useful. Things like plumbing, irrigation, rainwater drainage, insulation for wires. PVC is used in all kinds of things. I just think it's very interesting that this molecule is being talked about for its toxicity. And some of you guys might not know how important it is to our day to day life. So let's briefly talk about the dangers of vinyl chloride exposure. So number one, it's transported as a liquid gas, like in these little structures. Primary exposure is via inhalation because it is a gas. Now, when it comes to exposure, and this is some of the questions with East Palestine, there's a lot coming out. PPM is important, parts per million. In other words, the concentration is very important because although everyone is different, high concentrations would lead to more intense and severe symptoms. Now, when it is consumed, it distributes rapidly across the body. A lot of the effects depend on dosing, really the, the amount, the route, time, how much time has passed, PPE, personal protective equipment. There's a lot of variables when it comes to the exposure of this molecule. Now, acute exposure, in other words, more serious exposure would lead to things like dizziness, headache, shortness of breath, you could have liver damage potential for cancer, especially when liver damage. Now the cancer causing factor is a lot more rare. Overall, you don't want to breathe in this stuff. It's very dangerous. Carcinogenic, like I mentioned before, it has a potential to lead to cancerous tumors. And for some people exposed to it, it causes something called Raynaud's disease, which I believe is a lack of circulation in certain parts of the body, but you really see it in the fingers. As far as East Palestine, my questions are how much was released? I do know that at least initially, there's a lot of fishy stuff going on with how much was explained. A lot of the people in the town are very upset. It's a lot of stuff 
you know, that tends to happen when big business is threatened because of their image. A lot of these places don't care about people. It's all about money. How far did the exposure go? Did it spread to other places? I haven't kept up with it as much. If anyone is watching this video that's in this vicinity, please comment because I'd love to know what your personal perspective is. The air and water contamination, how serious is it? A lot of people don't trust the EPA. They don't trust the people that are coming in to test this stuff because what's being said is one thing, but what people are experiencing is another. In general, like what's going on? How many people are exposed? Like I mentioned before in these questions, I would just want to know as far as transparency, what are the damages? What are the long-term implications, et cetera, et cetera. Then there was a huge issue with Norfolk Southern, the EPA. I believe people in the town are still having frustrating situations. I don't know all the details, but I do know just looking at it as an outsider, it's fishy. It doesn't seem right. There's a lot going on. And I wanted to make this video just to educate you guys on what it is and a little bit of the dangers as far as this train derailment is concerned. So let's go back to the summary and talk about what we learned today. We briefly learned that vinyl chloride is a colorless, flammable, carcinogenic gas. It's a part of a family called the organochlorines and it's used in PVC pipe. We talked briefly about this very large family called the organochlorines. You have molecules like Claritin, the antihistamine, the nasty pesticide like DDT, and more examples. Then we talked about PVC, polyvinyl chloride, has all kinds of applications like plumbing, irrigation, insulation, rainwater drainage, and there's all kinds of other uses for this very, very common substance. Lastly, we talked about the dangers of vinyl chloride exposure, the dangers of inhaling it, dizziness, headache, shortness of breath, possible liver damage, and then we spoke about the East Palestine disaster. Some of the questions that I have, some of the fishy things going on. Like I said, if there's anyone that's in that area or lives in East Palestine that happens to be watching this video, I'd love to know what your thoughts are on what's going on. I'd love to know the inside take on what's happening right now. That's all I got. I hope you guys learned a lot from this video. And as always, thank you so much for watching and listening. Please like, comment, and subscribe. Tell your friends, and I'll be back soon with another video.